Hey, it's Vaughn here. Hope you're doing well. Hope everything's swinging. And uh, I'm here in Osaka. I'm about to go to my favorite drum shop called Act Dr Drum Mura or Act Drum Shop. And I'm uh, going to show you how I pick out a ride cymbal. Uh, I get a lot of really great comments, really positive comments about my ride cymbals. Y'all think they sound great, and I appreciate that. I like them. Uh, and I want to just show you kind of some tips and tricks for picking out a good ride cymbal so you too can have a great sounding ride cymbal on your kit. All right? So I'll see you over there. So here we are. This is a really cool drum shop. Pound for pound, they got lots of good stuff here. Ooh, it's like a toy store. Konnichiwa. Chotta no ride shimbol wo sagashimasu. Yo, chotta YouTube no video tsukurimasu. Ii desu ka? Yeah. Kore ga boku no okini ni drum no drum shop no nihon de. Saying it's my favorite drum shop in Japan, but it's been a while. Look at all those snare drums. So many snare drums. Look at all those cymbals. Woo! My gosh. Look at all those cymbals. All right, so let's have some fun. All right, so a couple of notes here, and we've got some nice J-pop playing in the background. Uh, so a couple of notes about ride cymbals. If you've got a steep curve to it, okay, uh, then it's going to have a higher pitch. If you've got a larger bell or you've got deep grooves on it, it's going to have a longer sustain. So these are a couple, just some, some tips to think about. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and just hit some different cymbals and you can kind of see um, kind of what I do. I'm just going to show you kind of my process. I don't discriminate. A good cymbal is a good cymbal, but I often will find myself gravitating back towards Zildjian just because of the sound that I like. I like a darker sound, um, and I like something that has a lot of stick definition, and I like something that doesn't have too much uh, sustain. So I find that the Zildjian's work good for me. So, but I like also like Istanbul. This is a nice sounding one. By the way, you wanna bring your sticks with you, and you wanna bring your brushes with you, and maybe your mallets, all the things that you need to be able to play on the cymbals. So, this is pretty good, but it's a little bit trashy sounding for my flavor. Here's a Mel Lewis. That's a nice clean, nice clean sound. Still, but not quite my style. But what I do is I just go through and I just hit them, all the different cymbals. And that's got a nice sound to it. That's really dark. I like the dark sound. A lot of definition. These symbols here are called koide, koide symbols, and they're made in Japan. Very nice symbol maker here in Japan. You can see the brand here. Uh, just, I don't endorse anybody, but I'm just showing you because I think it's pretty cool that Japan has its own symbols, uh, own symbol man manufacturer. So there's koide, very nice. nice. Nice symbols. I know a lot of cats here in Japan that play those. So there's your Istanbul, so another Koide on the bottom. Istanbul, this is actually not so bad. When I come back and play it, I kind of like it. I might try that one later in the drum room. No, too trashy for me. So I just go through and I just hit with the sticks. And I'm listening again for that definition, sustain, uh, darkness, but not too, I want some, some tone to it. Now this is like a, a rock ride cymbal, very thick. The other thing I like in my ride cymbals is to be on the thinner side, bigger and thinner. So at least 20 inches and thinner. This is a 21 inch, so this is just right in the ballpark. This one sounds pretty good. I'm gonna try that out later. Yeah. And they have a little, uh, you know, paper clip and a, and a little sign on them, but that doesn't affect too much the sound. I can pretty much figure out. But this is like being in a, in a, in a candy store. I can get off that symbol. Nope. Okay, well those are all those over here. 
Let's go over here and see what we've got. An FX Raw Crash Large Bell. I don't think so. Let's try um, Sabian. I, you know, I think Sabian makes wonderful cymbals, but I've just never been a fan of the sound. I don't know why, just my thing. I can't tell you for sure why. Sweet Ride, that's kind of like a standard. And Kurope, I, I love Kurope cymbals, um, but you know, they they come, sometimes they're really great and sometimes they're, mm, so it just depends. Could try that later, see what it sounds like without all the other cymbals rattling it. So, Constantinople's are good, those are, those are a standard. Can try that too, only, only, this is about, I don't know, 800 bucks or something, I mean, it, it ain't cheap. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Nothing there. And I think that's it. So let's just go ahead and grab those two that I really wanted to check out. Um, well, maybe three. We'll see. And I'll set them up for you, and we can see how they sound. We're going to start with this Mel Lewis. Okay, so I'm here in the drum room, and we're going to try this out. I just wanted this one was on here when I walked in. This is a Koide, and it's not it's not my my sound. It's a little on the thicker side. You can see uh, it's not the sound I like, but I definitely think it's got a nice bell on it for playing rock and pop and stuff. This would be a actually be a beautiful symbol to play because he actually is pretty versatile. It's not too pingy, so nice sound. All right, here's that beautiful Mel Lewis symbol. Ooh, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. But, it's a great sounding symbol, but notice how it just starts to run away. It just gets really washy. It doesn't have enough definition for me. has a nice, very nice bell. And you can see that there's a little more of a curvature to it. So because it's a little more curved, it's got a little higher pitch, which is nice. Um, and it's got deep grooves, right? And it's got that big bell. So you're gonna get this long sustain. Beautiful sounding symbol though. Very, very beautiful. All right, so I'm back over here at the symbol tree and just checking out symbols that were under that other one. And while they all sound okay, this they're just a little, this one's, these are a little too trashy for me. So really haven't found anything yet that I'm super excited about. But this is how ride symbol shopping goes. So when you find one that you love, price is no object. You must get it. That's interesting. Again, you can see how it kind of starts running away. So you lose the stick definition. All right, so here's that Zildjian Kurope that I was looking at earlier. I haven't played it yet. Let's see what it sounds like. Interesting. So can you hear already there's more stick definition? The grooves are not very deep. The bell is pretty small, right? There's a little bit of a curve, but it's more on the flat side. So it's got a lower sound, it's a little darker, and you know, it's got a, just a different sound to it than the other cymbals that we were playing. So it's all right, but it's not something that I would ever use in my cymbal setup. All right, so here is really, I think a lot of times people think of it as kind of the gold standard for modern modern jazz ride cymbals. Um, this is the K Constantinople, and this is like the thousand dollar cymbal. It seems like well, in Japan it's it's called Juma Yen, which uh, is you know right now is roughly about mm, eight hundred bucks or whatever uh, U.S. dollars. So this is a 22, 22 inch. Uh, the grooves are not super deep, but they're not uh, they're not um, really shallow like on the Kurope or other cymbals 
and the bell is pronounced, but it's not so big. So this is what you get. It's a nice sounding symbol. Now you notice that even though it's dressed to wash, you can still hear the stick definition. Now, here's another uh, litmus test. This is an important test. Bring your brushes. Ooh, listen to that. Beautiful sound. Listen to that shimmer. Do your little cymbal scrapes like that with your brushes. Little flutters on the side. If you want to learn how to play brushes, check out my brushes mastery course. Lots of happy drummers in there. But all kinds of cool sounds. See, your cymbal is really an extension of your voice. The other thing Joe Jones used to always say is that it's like uh, every ride cymbal is like a symphony. You've got the higher pitch instruments of the, of the symphony orchestra here, all the way out to kind of the, the bass violins, all the way out here. So, you know, really interesting. Hear this? Really interesting, right? Don't you love that? So many different tones and textures. You can also grab our... Oh, I got one hand to use here. What a beautiful sounding cymbal. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, another important point about choosing cymbals is what kind of stick you're using, what kind of tip you have on your stick. So these are some custom sticks I made years ago, and this is kind of how they sound. But if I choose a tighter, more of a ball-shaped tip on my stick, I get this sound, right? Completely different. So it really, also comes down to the kind of sticks that you use. So what I suggest you do is take the sticks that you like when you go cymbal hunting. So moral of the story here is you've got to find the sound that works for you. You've got to find the sound that you want to use when you play drums. And it may not be my sound, right? It may, you've got to find what your voice is. And soon you start, start developing an ear for that and kind of know what you want to hear. So you can walk into the drum shop like me and go, and go, oh, no, none of those are good. See you next week. You know, I mean, it's it becomes a pretty easy process, actually. So I hope this has helped. I hope it kind of helps you get more of an idea of what you can do, uh, you know, and picking out your symbols. And if you've got any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to keep connecting with you. And keep swinging, my friend. Thank you.